Hello. I've been asked to say something about our Anglican Catholic orders. Um, now, this can be a bit of a difficult subject for some people, particularly those who are not um, Anglican Catholic. Uh, the famous papal bull of 1896, um, uh, which was brought forward by Pope Leo XIII, uh, unequivocally uh, describes Anglican orders as being null and void. Now, of course, uh, we don't believe that at all. Um, the, we believe that the bull has got serious errors in it. But, obviously, for Roman Catholics, that's, that's not good enough, because obedience to the Pope means they don't really have much of a choice but to, to believe that bull. And so that means that we do have to be uh, very sensitive with each other. Uh, and it's one reason why I'm not going to be entertaining any comments on this video of the type that says, oh, you, you Anglicans, your, your, your orders are null and void, um, etc., etc. We're not going to have any polemical com uh, comments. Uh, it's important to understand what um, holy orders mean for the Anglican Catholic Church. And essentially they do mean the same as they do for the uh, Orthodox Church and for the uh, Roman Catholic Church. Um, essentially we have an entire system of God's grace um, transmitted through sacraments. Now that word sacrament has the... It, it not only has the idea of... Um, uh, St. Augustine's outward signs of invisible grace, that, that sort of thing. It also has uh, the idea of oath. A sacrament in, in Roman times was, a, was an oath. Um, and that's why we have them, because, you see, they, they, are, they represent promises by God. They represent um, expressions of the new covenant whereby God gives us grace. And that it's the same grace that the Church has always received, ever since, well, ever since time immemorial. That's why we Anglican Catholics are very um, uh, convinced by the whole idea of apostolic succession as being a transmission of authority to distribute the sacraments and grace that comes from the, the apostles. It's, it's like having a... Uh, um, it's that true vine spreading through the church, through the priesthood. Um... And we Anglican Catholics are convinced by this understanding of holy orders. And we believe that our orders are unbroken from apostolic times because they have been transmitted according to the rites of the, of the Church, according to the processes of the Church, according to the intentions of the Church. Now, obviously, we do have these um, these splits, these reformation. We have the Reformation. We have the Great Schism in the eleventh century. Um, so the Orthodox will not recognise any orders of any. You can. The Orthodox will say, well, as long as you, um, if you lay hands on people, if, if bishops lay hands on people, that, that's not enough because they're schismatic. They're not part of the Orthodox faith. So it doesn't really matter. Um, of course, uh, the, the idea is then that should uh, should the schism be undone, then the orders will be uh, restored, like grafting the, grafting the vine 
the branch on the vine. The Roman Catholics, it's slightly more tricky. And I think you have to understand a little bit why uh, uh, the Roman Catholics were forced, in some ways their hand was forced, to, to have this papal bull. Um, because clearly if in, in England in the, the 18th century where the Roman Catholicism is being permitted again, what you can't have is your faithful Roman Catholics saying, well, actually, the Anglicans have got uh, uh, valid orders as well. It doesn't matter. We don't need the Roman Roman Catholic Church. And so uh, the Roman Catholic Curia, uh, particularly Cardinal Vaughan, I think, realised that the only way that you can uh, stop uh, Roman Catholics regarding as the Church of England having valid orders is if you get the Pope to to pronounce on them, and that's what Pope Leo XIII did for political motives, and that's why the the logic of the bull doesn't really flow properly. Um, and indeed, strictly speaking, if we look at the, that papal bull, which declares the defect of form, um, i.e. the the, the the words and the, the the words aren't uh, said aren't correct. Then the the new the Novus Ordo, the new ordinal, from the nineteen sixties onwards, um, has the same problem. So, with Roman Catholics and Anglican Catholics, we have this we have this problem and. It's important not that we should be involved in polemics, shouting each other and calling each other heretic or invalid or whatever. We, we can't be doing that. There needs to be proper dialogue on the issue. And there are theologians out there who are doing dialogue. And I personally suggest we let them get on with it rather than be, be armchair uh, warriors for or against uh, Apost Apostolic Curie. There's also another little issue. Um, our in the Anglican Catholic Church, uh, our um, orders were bestowed by Bishop Albert Chambers and Bishop Francis Pactacan. and so we have two bishops. Um, not three. Again, the politics of the situation made it very difficult. We did have four bishops who were prepared to do the consecration um, in 1978. But um, two of them had to pull out. That's um, uh, Bishop Pay and Bishop Boynton. And they had to pull out for one reason or another. But the consecration still went ahead with two. But, the, but Bishops Boynton and Pay actually sent letters of consent and thereby hangs the tail that you uh, the, the it only really takes one bishop to validly consecrate and it's the purpose of the other bishops to essentially form um, a, a, a decree of consent of the church that these these people are indeed part of the church and they are bishops of the church and um, since then, all the bishops in the ACC, in the United Episcopal Church of North America, um, the Anglican Province of Christ the King, Anglican Province of America, Anglican Church in America, Diocese of Holy Cross, all of them whose orders come from uh, chambers, they are all, um, uh, they've all responded to the three um Bishop rule, at least. Further than that, um, uh, Bishop uh, Chambers himself uh, had in his consecration had Bishop Rowinski of the Polish National Catholic Church lay hands upon him. And you look at some of his or uh, people who or consecrated him, same thing is true. The, the Polish National Catholic Church been involved there as well. 
as well as old Catholic lines. So there's, there is some confluence and consent of a wider Catholic Church than, than, mere, um, than merely the Church of England and the Anglican Church. Um, one final thing is a bit of a problem that we have with uh, the Church of England and their orders. Because they ordain women as priests, and they ordain women as bishops. Now here's the problem. If you, as a bishop, intend to ordain a woman as a bishop with the same intention as you would a man, I, you see them as being interchangeable, then that's actually a defect in intention, because they're not the same. And which is why Anglican Catholics uh, can't be in communion with a church where, uh, which ordains women as priests and bishops. It can't be done, because from our point of view, it's a defect of intention. You're basically saying women and men are the same, and they're not. So that's essentially why we can't uh, walk together. It doesn't stop us from having good dialogue or making uh, friends or talking across the divide. That's good if we can. And we should be encouraged to try and make friends of each other as best as we can because, well, the days are dark and Christians uh, need as much encouragement to be together as possible. As far as we are concerned, uh, the Anglican Catholic Church has valid orders, and th these orders go stretch back to the apostles themselves, just like any other valid Catholic line of uh, apostolic succession. And we believe that that links us throughout time, past and time future, to to to, to Christians and to Christ. Hope that's given you some idea. Um, as I say, I'll be willing to take a few questions if you have them, but I'm not going to be engaging in polemics. Um, we're going to leave the polemics aside so that the, the theologians with good scholarship will do it for us. So God bless you. God bless you that you may always be find a priest willing to give you the sacraments that you need to grow in Christ. God bless you if the whole issue worries you or concerns you in any way, that you may receive enlightenment from God and find, always find a willing ear to listen. And God bless you that you may participate in the royal priesthood of the church and find the grace of God within your life and in your life in the church. God bless you. Please pray for me.